I've been using Google Chrome for years. Google Chrome is the web browser, but lately it's gotten more and more stale. I've been curious about trying other browsers, and when I saw that Opera offers native support for Web3 domains and other privacy-focused features like a free VPN, I knew I had to give it a try. But is it really practical to switch to a browser like Opera? That's what I'm finding out in today's video of Opera vs Chrome, and you might not realize they're basically the same browser. So I've gone down the path of trying other web browsers before, and all roads keep leading back to Google Chrome. This is because I'll try another browser and it might be missing a feature that I need or it's not reliable, and I end up using Chrome in the end. This cycle has been going on for years, and you might be asking, Christian, what's the problem with Google Chrome? If you're happy with it, why not stick to it? And you could stick to it, but let's not forget that Google is a data collection company. Their goal is to collect your user data and use it for advertising and other purposes. Everything you do on the internet, Google can see when you use Google Chrome because it's their web browser. At its core, Google Chrome has been the same product for the past five or six years. Yes, Google is adding in a couple new features here or there, but they haven't been innovative, and they don't have to be. That's because Google Chrome has a reputation of being the browser. Ask any developer, what browsers do you support with your website? And they're probably gonna tell you, just download Google Chrome, don't bother with any of those other browsers. Google Chrome has been put on this pedestal as the browser to use. Like if you're using another browser, what are you even doing? And I get it, it's good, it's reliable, it just works. But when we step back and look at the bigger picture and realize innovation's not happening and we're feeding all of our user data to this big company, it starts to crumble a little bit. Now going into this comparison, I was sure it would never make sense for me to switch to Opera. I've tried Opera in the past and it just wasn't there yet, but I committed to trying it again for a number of reasons. The native support for Web3 domains really caught my attention. The privacy focused features like a free VPN made me see Opera is really trying to be innovative. I can see that they're pushing the bounds of a web browser and seeing what they can do to think outside the literal box of a web browser and just make it more interesting. I like the ambition and I wanted to try it again and see what they've come up with. I installed Opera and immediately had some challenges. First, I had to get used to the UI. As soon as I launched the browser, it was different. And of course it's different, it's not Chrome. But I've just been used to Chrome for so long that any other browser I open, I go, oh, could I just go back to Chrome? This is uncomfortable. But I pushed through it, I'm getting used to the UI. And then the second challenge that I faced was using browser extensions. I had this idea that there would be a lot of native extensions for Chrome. I thought I'd be able to use 1Password and Honey and a lot of these extensions that I use on Chrome, I figured they would just have Opera versions and I found out they actually didn't. See, what you have to do is get this extension for Opera that allows you to install Chrome extensions. What? Like, is this gonna be reliable? Is this gonna work out? I don't know. I had to do further testing and get to the bottom of it. After getting over the initial pain point of installing Opera and getting used to the UI, my experience was generally uneventful. I really expected to run into more problems, but I didn't. Performance was fast and snappy, Chrome extensions ran reliably, and the built-in ad blocker just works. I didn't even bother with installing an ad blocker extension like I'd have to do in Chrome. Then I started noticing the little features that make Opera unique. Let's start with the sidebar. It allows you to access message apps with a click, access other features like the player and crypto wallet, and access favorites, history, and downloads. All right, the sidebar is kind of goofy. I personally would disable it if I continue using Opera. It's essentially a bunch of embedded websites for Messenger, Telegram, Instagram, Twitter, and Spotify, and I, I just don't really get it. I don't know what it's adding to the experience, but it's easy to disable, and excluding the gimmicky sidebar, the other unique features to Opera I found highly useful. It's the little features that made the difference. Things like auto picture in picture on YouTube and video conferencing services. I can start a YouTube video and click to another tab and it's picture in picture automatically. 
I don't have to think about it. The same thing is true for Google Meet. I was on a video call. I switched tabs to look something up. Everybody in the call just shrunk down to a little window in the browser. It's brilliant. You just have to try it. And honestly, I don't want to go without this feature. There's other cool features too. Things like a context menu when you highlight text that will automatically pop up and let you search text or copy text without having to right click. There's also a screenshot and PDF generator tool built into the browser. There's a built-in tracker blocker so you can make sure that these sites aren't collecting a bunch of data on you and cross-referencing with other sites. There's a built-in VPN. There's native support for Web3 domains. Opera is really trying to innovate and add features that are legitimately useful. And speaking of VPNs, you've heard me talk about VPNs before on this channel. And the VPN in Opera is just okay. It's a free VPN, so I can't complain, but it's very basic. Opera has a disclosure at the top that your connection speeds may vary when you connect to the VPN, so they're not really guaranteeing that it's a fast VPN, and you can't connect to precise different locations for region lock streaming. It's not really amazing, but it gets the job done. It changes your IP address, it hides your data from your internet service provider, and it's free, so I can't complain. It's pretty cool. These might seem like small features, but I've really enjoyed what they've added to my browser experience. And this is on top of the fact that I haven't really found many cons to Opera. My biggest con so far is that reverse image search via Google is not supported in Opera. This is where you right click on an image and say search image on Google and the browser will throw that image into Google. Google will tell you where that image is used on other websites on the internet, as well as show you similar images. It's a really useful feature. I use it quite a bit on Chrome and it's not supported in Opera. This is strange to me because it's supported in Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and other major browsers according to Google's support documentation, but it's not supported in Opera. Also, my producer Matthew pointed out that Opera doesn't have any equivalent of user profiles in Chrome. He really enjoys having separate profiles for work and for personal, especially because he works from home on the same computer. He can have a work profile that has all of his work bookmarks, all of his work accounts logged in. And then at the end of the workday, he can switch over to the personal profile, have all of his personal bookmarks, personal sites. It's almost like two different experiences in the same browser. This is a feature that Google's added recently and perhaps is one of the more innovative additions to the browser in recent years. Opera just isn't doing anything like it. I wish they had user profiles, but they don't. Overall, I've really enjoyed my experience using Opera. It's the little features that make me want to keep using it. And I was shocked at how smoothly Chrome extensions run. And speaking of Chrome extensions, you might not know that Opera is based on Chromium. What is Chromium? Chromium is an open source project by Google that powers Google Chrome. Wait a minute, Christian, you're telling us that this whole time you've been trying to get away from Google Chrome because of data privacy concerns and Opera is using the same exact engine powered by Google? Yup. But Chromium is a lot bigger than you may realize. It powers browsers like Brave and even Microsoft Edge. It's open source, and this means that it's a lot simpler for developers to build a browser based on Chromium. But what about user data? Is it being fed to Google? Chromium says on their website that Chromium provides users full transparency and control over the information managed by the browser. Now, this may be true, but what about full transparency over user data supplied to Google? This statement just glosses right over that and says, don't worry, Chromium has features built in so that you can decide what data is shared with the browser. But what about the company that actually is behind the project? Opera is a browser that claims to emphasize security and privacy. It's the features like the built-in ad blocker, tracker blocker, free VPN. They've done a lot of things to show that they're very committed to privacy and security and handling user data properly. Yet they don't really address Chromium. They don't say anything on their website, at least I didn't find anything front and center without digging, and it really makes you wonder, is data being shared with Google? After doing some reading online, many users say that even if Google didn't have a direct line within Chromium to see everything users are doing, Chromium is built in a way where it reports back to Google for various features. At the end of the day, if you want to avoid Google having a hand in your browsing data, you may want to consider alternative 
alternative browsers. Firefox and Safari are some of the last major browsers to have their own proprietary web engines. So after trying Opera again, will I be making the switch? For now, I think I'll stick to Opera, but will it stick? Will I be using it a year from now or will I have gone back to Chrome? I don't know. It's too early to tell. I think I'm gonna try some alternative browsers like Firefox and Safari that don't use Chromium. Because if I'm gonna go through the trouble of not using the web browser, Chrome, the king of web browsers, why would I want to use another web browser that's still Chromium? I'm torn because I really enjoy my experience with Opera, but I also know it's still Chromium, Google still has a hand in it, and if I'm not gonna use Chrome, I kinda wanna commit and go all out and avoid Chromium altogether. So for now, I'll be sticking to Opera, but I also wanna test some other browsers. And I don't know, maybe I'll just go back to using Chrome. But I like Opera, but Opera is Chromium. It's, it's so confusing. I remember when web browsers used to be Chrome or not Chrome. And now these other browsers have gotten so good partially because of Chromium and it just leaves me confused on what the best web browser is. But I'm determined to get to the bottom of it. I'd love to know, which web browser do you use? Drop a comment down below. And if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new comparisons. With that said, I'll catch you guys next time.